Deputy Director of Homeland Security, Mr. Tom Hong. Thank you. First speaker Jackson, you're more pissed off than I am. That first guy. Like, Holy shit! I'll sit back to him. He's more pissed off than I am. I'm always pissed off. I'm pissed off for the fact I just found out they got uh, PBR. I didn't know that, so I've been looking for him. <laughs> hey, listen. I, uh, I'm first of all, I'm happy to be in the same building with so many American patriots. Yeah, yeah. General Flynn, he's a national hero. And, I, and, and me and General Flynn, we've done many events, the same events, but we always keep missing each other. So tonight's the first night I actually got to shake his hand and thank him for the service to this nation. But what an American hero he is. How do you beat someone like that? And, and, and the, the sheriff from Culpeper, um, he's got to be the greatest sheriff in the nation. Yeah. Not only because he stands up the Second Amendment. I didn't know who he was, so one day I saw him on Fox saying, you know, if, if the governor of Virginia takes our guns away, I'm going to deputize everybody in Col Culpeper County. Yeah. Including me. He did. Uh, so I'm happy to be here. I want, first of all, I, I want to explain who Tom Holman is, because a lot of people walk up to him tonight. Look, I started my career as a police officer in New York. I joined the Border Patrol, and I worked my way up the ladder one rung at a time. I was the first uh, ICE director to actually come up to the ranks, and President Trump gave me that job, who happens to be the greatest president of my lifetime. He's, a, he's, he's, a, you know, he, he's, he's the greatest president I've ever. I worked for I worked for six presidents, starting with Ronald Reagan, and I and I and I respect all of them, but no one has done more to secure our board and protect this nation than Donald Trump. That's just a stone cold fact. And, and, the, and the left, they won't leave him alone. You know, he's been out of office for six months, eight months, and they're still attacking him because they're so scared to death he's coming back. And he is coming back. Yeah. And I'll tell you a story when I am about uh, the last phone call I got from him. He calls me like every two weeks on a Sunday. My wife says, why is he calling on a Sunday? I say, he must be bored. But, you know, I talk to him every couple weeks. And let me tell you something. This man loves this country. This man wants you to stand up for the uh, national anthem. The man wants you to fly an American flag on your front porch. This man is all about the love of the nation. And, and, and we, I can't wait till he comes back and, and fix this shit that's going on right now. <laughs> so anyways, once we came, uh, uh, I was third in command at ICE and I retired after 27 years. I, I signed a contract to make a hell of a lot more money than I did as the ICE, ICE guy. And, uh, at my retirement party, about 400 people there, my wife's there, and my son's there, and we're leaving. The, the event's over, and I'm shaking hands, and people come to the event. My phone rings, and it's John Kelly, who happened to be the, who was his uh, Homeland uh, Security Director at the time. He calls me up and says, hey, uh, Tom, you got, a, you got a minute for the president? I said, yeah. So I go to my office. My office is empty now. Everything I have as the third in command of ICE is in my garage, in boxes. I have retired. So I went up and I picked the phone up and it was John Kelly and, and the president. He says, uh, I know this is bad timing, but we want you to stay and run the agency, which is a three-step promotion. And I looked at him and I said, yeah, that's bad timing, uh, General. I just retired. And he goes, no, you haven't. The paperwork's on my desk. I haven't signed it. So I said, well, look, I got to talk to my wife. I got to talk to this company to sign a contract with. So can I let you know Monday morning? This is a Friday. Certainly, Monday morning, at 0800, I'll call you. And before I hung the phone up, he said this to me. He goes, Tom, you served the country for 27 years. You're a career law enforcement officer. The President of the United States needs you to come back and help him. So think about that through the weekend. So I had the weekend, I went home that night, that weekend, me and my wife fought all weekend. She said, you ain't going back. And he, he, this is a true story. I said, why not? The President of the United States needs you to come back. She goes, I don't like the President. I don't like President Trump. Fast forward, she loves President Trump now because she saw what he did for this country. So Monday morning, I called up and I said, yeah, I'll come back. Of course, I came back, and the first thing I met in my office was a bunch of attorneys that they had a list of every gift I got from every employee, and I had to give it all back. And you think my wife was pissed off then? I had to go. My wife said, "Remember that five hundred dollar gift certificate you got? I need it back. I didn't need to give it back." The very next day, I'm on Air Force One, 
We're the greatest president this nation's ever had. Donald Trump. Now, I'm here tonight because, Jerome, I, I, when I was first called, would you consider endorsing him? I said, well, let me do the 411 on the guy. He's a strong borders guy. He believes in the rule of law on the border. He believes we should build a border wall. He believes we shouldn't have illegal immigration in this country. What's going on right now, we have the first president in the history of this nation that's actively aiding and abetting the, the criminal cartels in Mexico. We have, we have lost control of the border. President Trump gave us the most secure border I've seen in my lifetime, that I've seen in my career, and I know because I spent 35 years doing that. I wore that green uniform. I was a nice agent. I know the things I saw during my career that would turn your stomach. And everybody always asks me, why do you get so emotional on Fox? Why do you scream at Congress? Well, first of all, AOC's a moron. Yeah. So she makes you angry by the very fact she's sitting there on her pedestal. How the hell she ever got elected, I'm still trying to figure out. But every time I go to Capitol Hill, it turns into an argument because these people do not care. The Democratic Party has sold this country out. President Biden sold the country out to win an election. He actually voted for border barriers and, and secure fence act 2006. He actually supported Border Patrol one time. But he turned it all around because he needed to win the progressive left to win the election. He sold this nation out to become president. Shame on him. He should be ashamed of himself. But he is acting. I said it last night at Handy. I raised hell in Handy last night. I lost my temper because I says, you know, he's the first president acting, aiding and abetting criminal cartels in Mexico. Children are dying. 31% of women are getting raped by the cartels. The cartels are making millions of dollars a day. We got 92,000 fentanyl overdoses in this country. Fentanyl that comes across that border every day because he created this crisis. When he was running for president, he said, I'll put a moratorium on deportation. I'll give you free health care. I'm going to pass amnesty. I'm going to abolish ICE. I want to end ICE detention. When you make those kind of promises, everybody in the world is going to come. And he knew it. He was the vice president in 2005 and 2006. 2000, 2005, no, 2000, no, excuse 2014-2015, when we had the first family crisis, he was the vice president. Alejandro Mayorkas, the current secretary, was a deputy secretary. I briefed both those men numerous times. They know what causes the surge, and they know how to stop it. And what did they do when they became the president and secretary? They were doing the exact opposite of what they know works. Why? Because this border crisis is by design. It's not an accident. It's not mismanagement. They have opened the borders up because and it's not a coincidence they overturned the Trump census rule so they can be counted on the census, which equals more seats in the House for the Democrats, which leads to an electoral college, which leads to perpetual power for the Democrats in Congress. They sold this country out for perpetual power. And we have crime rampant on the border. We had over border, 20 border patrols die of COVID already because they're putting the front line and have to deal with these people coming across every day because Joe Biden opened up the border. Joe Biden should be ashamed of himself. He's going to go down in history as, a, as the most ignorant president in the history of this nation. And Secretary Mayorkas, who wants to stand down there every day and say the border's secure, the border's closed, all you got to do is look at, the, look at the friggin' video, Secretary, and say that. He's lying to the American people. And what I said last night in Fox, friends, I'm sick, sick and tired of even the Republican senators and congressmen who constantly talk a tough game but what have they done? They haven't done shit to take action against this administration. Where are the articles of impeachment? Where are they? I know the Dems control the House, but you need to introduce articles of impeachment for the Secretary and the President because they have given us, they have, they no longer defend the silence in this nation and they have opened our border up. They are, they are not only ignoring the law, they're violating the law. And that's why I may be retired, but they're not going to shut me up. They wish I'd go away because I know the bodies are there. I know more about immigration and border security than anybody in the current administration. And they wish I'd shut up and go away. But guess what? I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm sick and tired of the left attack. The President of the United States in his first speech said the last administration watched children die of starvation on the banks of the Rio Grande. That man, our Commander-in-Chief, attacked the men and women that wore that green uniform every day, that put themselves in, in harm's way every day for this country, and he claimed they watched children die of starvation on the banks of the Rio Grande. 
Men and women board tours have already saved 7,000 lives this year. These are American patriots. At 3 o'clock in the morning, when you and I are sleeping, these men and women are standing in some, on some dirt trail someplace in the middle of nowhere. I've done it. 3 o'clock in the morning, a sensor goes off. These men and women will stand on that trail and see what's coming at them. Is it a heavy armed drug smuggler? Is it just a migrant looking for work? They don't know, but they're going to take it on. I buried border patrol agents. I buried ICE agents. I love each and every one of these men and women. And they're American patriots. For the commander in chief to vilify the way he's done. For the secretary not to admit the crisis they're dealing with every day and the dangers they put themselves in. Shame on them. So look, we need to take this country back. It starts with taking Virginia back. Jerome's the guy to do it. And Jerome, wherever you are. Jerome, where are you? Come up here. If I want to look you in the eye. I need to look Jerome in the eye. You know me. I'm telling you right now. If you get soft on immigration, if you become a rhino, I will hunt you down. And, and, and I will attack you on every national news station I can think of. But you know what? And we're not here, because I know you won't do that. You're a patriot. You serve, thank you for your service to the nation. And I want you to go up there and raise hell and take this country back for us. It starts with you. Now, the reason I'm excited, I, I, I will tell you one story. I'll tell you two stories about the greatest present in my lifetime. I'm sitting around my house Sunday, I'm smoking a brisket. I get a phone call, and it's, it's the president. He said, what are you doing? I said, smoking a brisket. What, what the hell does that mean? I said, I explained to him what smoking a brisket was. He goes, what are you doing Monday? I said, what do you want me to do Monday? I want you to know the Oval office Monday morning. He said, okay, do I need to prepare for anything? He said, no, just show up, 8 a.m. So I show up at 8 a.m. and he had this whole military entourage waiting for me. And I walk in and uh, he awarded me the National Security Medal. Greatest honor of my life. Oh. And afterwards, he picked everybody out and we sat in the Oval Office and chatted for a while. At the end of the conversation, he goes, uh, what are you doing tomorrow? I said, what do you want me to do tomorrow? He said, be here at OE 100. I want you to go to Texas, look at the border wall. Uh, with me one last trip. This is the last week he was in office. So I got an Air Force One the next day and went to the border office. Two things. So I'm sitting in the, in the Air Force One conference room and Lindsey Graham was in there and Mark Morgan, who's a direct, uh, commissioner of CBP. The president comes and he goes, Holman, how you doing? I said, pretty good. He goes, you have a good night last night? I said, excuse me? Good night. He goes, Secu uh, National Security Medal is always good for a good night. I said, sir? He goes, did your wife was grateful for the security medal. I said, yes, she was. She was very grateful for the security medal. Thank you very much. That's your president. What I'm trying to say is he's one of us. He, he's just, he might be a rich guy, but he loves the country just like everybody in this room does. Two weeks ago, I did, uh, on the way back in Air Force One, he called me up to the office in, on Air Force One, and we chatted for a few minutes to say, Mr. President, Thank you very much for giving me this flight on Air Force One, my last flight. He goes, what are you talking about? I says, well, Joe Biden ain't gonna bite Tom Holland on Air Force One anytime soon. He goes, come back in 2024, I'll give you a ride. <laughs> now you might think that's a one-off, but it wasn't a one-off. A week ago I did Fox and Friends. And I'm raising hell as usual. As soon as I took my earpiece off, and I'm filming for my home office, Fox Bill studio, studio in my home office, and, and you know, just so you know, half the time I'm not wearing pants. I'm, I'm wearing shorts. I'm wearing shoes here. My wife, I come downstairs, my wife said, where's your suit? I said, yeah, suit me from here up. I can wear shorts. Anyways, I, I'm raising hell, and I'm, I'm mad over some question they asked me about, you know, the secretary, Joe Biden. And um, I finished the show, my, my phone rings. It was President Trump. He goes, hey, two things. Number one, that picture behind you, is that you and me when I gave the National Security Medal? He said, yeah. He goes, well, I can't see myself good enough. Can you blow that picture up? I says, I, I, I'll work on that. He goes, number two, stop getting so pissed off. In 2024, you and I are going to fix this. Yeah. 
So I hope every day that President Trump does come back in 2024, and he has my commitment and my promise, you have my commitment and promise, we'll come back and we'll fix this shit. And it starts with your own bell. You gotta start fixing that soon.